Hey traders, checking out in the cryptocurrency space, we continue to see the bulls keep full control, bouncing off key EMA support levels. We keep seeing individual bulls running one at a time. We now have stock market bulls catching up as a bit of a laggard move over the last few days, and some CPI numbers to give you a heads up about that we need to keep an eye on tomorrow morning. So before we get into the charts, we've got a free ebook. If you click the link in the description of this video, it'll take you to a page. You enter your email and we send out a free ebook on building a comprehensive trading plan. Special thanks to Lamont who put it together. Worth checking out. It's a free resource. So the broader market bulls showing up today, gap up open in SPY, daily higher low established, and looking back at the high of this bounce after our fear flush, and a significant day for the stock market world. I'm having a really nice day, and I have to give a special thanks to the cryptocurrency space, because on Friday, when Bitcoin broke out, I went aggressive in growth stocks, because I said, in my mind, if our highest risk, highest reward sector is seeing a big bull day, I am looking for that confidence to trickle out into the stock market world, and I'm looking for our highest risk, highest reward stock market names to benefit as well. And they took a while, yesterday, or what was this, Monday, entire crypto world market cap is up 17% since Friday. So over the weekend, that bull move, and I'm surprised we are not seeing that confidence show up in more places in the stock market, dot, 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 yet. And so we have names like the US cannabis space having a very significant couple of days here, breaking out today, and just growth names in general. NIO is another name that I played, finally confirming its daily trend change. But again, the confidence, I got the confidence for these names on Friday when nothing was going on in the stock market world. And now we are seeing a laggard bull move as confidence trickles out elsewhere. And the cryptocurrency space has certainly remained strong. And it's the kind of scenario right now where normally I would have expected daily consolidation to be underway for Bitcoin after how the pullback shaped up yesterday. Big enough pullback to scout a four hour lower high. And in my opinion, if we didn't see the bullish stock market strength right now, we probably would have confirmed a four-hour downtrend and then would have just looked for a healthy daily high or low. But here we are up near the highs. And I do believe, I mean, right now we've got our, all of our major sectors are up one to 2%, which in the stock market world is a lot. So very bullish day in stocks, daily inside bar for Bitcoin, fending off daily consolidation. We've got a pattern of a higher low every single day, six days in a row on Bitcoin. And just keep setting these four-hour higher lows. Anything above... Actually, I'm on the 12-hour time frame for clarity on many names. So the question we have right now, can we see 12-hour continuation with a higher high? Or do we fail to break 45.5 and just form another 12-hour equilibrium? And all coin traders are A-OK -okay with sideways trading in Bitcoin in a bull market because that is when we see all coins get their turns and everybody pumping up. And we've certainly been seeing that the last four or five days. So it's looking like in this current scenario, worst case for the Bitcoin bulls will be a 12 hour lower high and tightening range into tomorrow. And tomorrow pre-market, we have CPI numbers. And you know, there's a lot, of, a lot of people are looking towards events that could potentially trigger market bears, whether it's crypto bears or stock market bears. There's a lot of people that are bearish out there on Twitter and social media. And right now the bears are resolving to, they're resorting to, is Russia going to invade the Ukraine? With the FOMC, we don't have the Fed talking for over a month at this point. CPI numbers. Okay, that's the next thing. Can we see a, a CPI number that leads to market weakness and some fear returning? So we have to keep an eye on that tomorrow. I believe it's 8.30 a.m. Eastern. Double check that time for me. But I believe that's when we're looking at that data. And again, you know, worst case scenario for Bitcoin, we'll just be looking for a daily higher low to form on consolidation. We have not seen hourly oversold conditions. We got real close but didn't get there. So I will still be scouting hourly oversold conditions, looking for daily higher lows on a lot of individual names, as well as Bitcoin. Dominance chart, nothing going on. Weekly time frame is sideways. Ethereum, up at the high. So again, I'm still in an Ethereum swing position. And nice strength. Four hour V-shape to the higher high. 12 hour is my guide. I'm just walking up a stop and I've been doing so for a while now. Move it up, move it up, move it up, move it up. So 3027 is our 12 hour higher low right now. The next resistance is 3273 and 3394. Bull cross of the EMAs on the daily time frame 
Last time we saw that was up at the all-time high. Have not seen it since we convincingly topped out. So a good sign. Bigger picture, is this our monthly high or low? Sure looks like it might be, but as we know, all of our names are going to need to confirm weekly trend changes. And patient, longer-term bulls are waiting for those weekly higher lows to be looking for entries. ETH BTC bouncing on the daily time frame, So significant move there. We're looking for a monthly higher low there, but we will likely need a weekly trend change here as well. Wherever this bounce tops out, we then need the weekly higher low and higher high if Ethereum bulls are going to stay in the lead over Bitcoin. And again, as long as we keep setting monthly higher lows, Ethereum is the play over Bitcoin bigger picture, certainly not on a day-to-day -day basis, but bigger picture, that's the case. If we lose the monthly uptrend, that will change. But the monthly uptrend is intact for now. Litecoin, so solid bull move as well. Higher low every day for six days, testing the recent high. And again, all I care about is LTC, BTC, because the Litecoin bull move, yeah, it's nice. There's nice gains there, but so many other names are seeing that same move. What I want to see is the breakout of the long, drawn-out, falling wedge, multiple-year pattern for LTZ, BTC, and anything under 3633 is just a lower high. In an ideal world, for me, we set a, a weekly lower high. We see crypto consolidate for the weekly higher lows everywhere. Everybody needs it. Bitcoin, Ethereum, Litecoin for the weekly higher lows and the weekly trend changes. And while that happens... Weekly consolidation in crypto leads to altcoins dropping faster. So LTC, BTC consolidates on the weekly. I enter Litecoin on that weekly higher low to position for a potential breakout of this pattern. If the trade is going to come to me in terms of perfectly how I want it, that's what's going to happen. I have no idea if that's what will happen, but that is what I am prepared for. And that is what I want to see for a swing trade entry on Litecoin. So what that would look like on the US dollar pairing would be wherever we top out on this move, next time we see weekly consolidation, scouting the higher low and scaling into a couple Litecoin entries for the possibility that that LTC BTC chart breaks out. We'll see. Mana. So just want to give another example. Again, I'm always talking about the spotlight and the correlation between the US dollar and the BTC pairings. And a lot of people are still confused by it, and it is confusing. It took me a long time to wrap my head around it and to get this tool as a bit of, you know, something that gives me useful information. And so looking at MANA USD right now, I look at this chart and I say, okay, 12-hour bull flag confirmed to a higher high. Granted, we didn't get a whole lot of follow-through, but we are still in four-hour higher lows. So there's no major red flags to me on this chart. It's a four-hour equilibrium right now. But when I look at the BTC pairing, I get some red flags. Why? 12-hour lower high, 4-hour downtrend confirmed. That's two instances where the BTC pairing has done something weaker than the U.S. dollar pairing. We know that coins are their strongest when it is the U.S. dollar pairing and the BTC pairing doing the exact same thing or the BTC pairing is leading. But with this current setup, I can say that if Bitcoin sees any kind of meaningful consolidation, that MANA is going to pull back harder because of this setup. And there's a scenario where, you know, you can get these red flags, these signals from the BTC pairing, but if Bitcoin doesn't pull back, it's not going to matter much because MANA USD will be able to maintain and hold on just fine for the bulls if Bitcoin keeps grinding higher. But the second Bitcoin starts consolidation in this current setup, MANA is positioned to drop harder and it's the BTC pairing that is telling us that we're weakening a little bit. And you can see it's a 12 hour lower high. And the question is, are we going to see a 12-hour equilibrium? So just a little example of the first little sign of weakness, because again, I don't see the sign of weakness in the US dollar pairing, but I do see it in the BTC pairing. XRP, nice bull move. Again, the four-hour EMA 12, trade it until it stops working. This market move the last six days, just so many coins test that four-hour EMA and then shoot up. And we just had a tightening four-hour range break bull, no follow-through. So we do have to be cautious of a rising wedge. Nothing notably concerning, but just bull breaks with a lack of follow-through after a significant bull run. We know to be keeping an eye out for the possibility. 
of bulls tiring. We know daily consolidation is inevitable. And keeping an eye out to see if, if stocks give us a clue for any daily consolidation. And again, watching those CPI numbers. But XRP, BTC, significant move up. Same thing, hourly bull breaks lacking follow. This is a rising wedge. So this tells me if I'm an aggressive bear, I'm scouting a bear entry. And if I want to protect some profits, I'm looking to take some profits off the table. Because right now we have a rising wedge on the US dollar and BTC pairing. And just looking at what Bitcoin is doing, if Bitcoin were to see a 12 hour lower high, again, if Bitcoin breaks out to a higher high, then we can break the, the rising wedge bullish. But if we set a 12 hour lower high in Bitcoin, then we're gonna be looking for rising wedges on XRP, USD, and BTC. So there are so many times where I'm looking at an altcoin where I put it in the frame of Bitcoin. Say, okay, well, if Bitcoin gives us this scenario, then this is likely to happen on this coin and it's BTC pairing. So I determine what's the most likely scenario on Bitcoin and then I try and apply it to the altcoins because we know the altcoins have better bull gains and better bear gains in both directions, just generally more volatility. So applying Bitcoin information and technical analysis to other altcoins. There's a bunch of altcoins right now that are just looking for a four hour lower high. So you look at Binance right here, great bounce, stair step pattern, higher low every single candle, but still way under that high of resistance. So equilibrium, on watch because of the retracement size of this bounce, but you look at Binance, you look at ADA. So we're scouting these lower highs compared to where we came from. And whether I'm a bull in swing positions that I don't wanna exit, but I wanna protect, or whether I'm an aggressive bear, I'm scouting trades off these recent highs. And again, whether it's the four hour or the 12 hour that you find clarity on, scouting lower highs from the recent highs. And there's a bunch of names. I just pull up my list and I, rank from strongest to weakest. So AXS, USDT, nope, different view. So I just skip it. Doesn't look the same, not what I'm looking for here. ICP, okay, I'm scouting a lower high compared to 2468, and I'm watching for a loss of the hourly uptrend to potentially set it. There's a rising wedge again. So if I'm looking for a 12 hour lower high, I am watching this rising wedge, and if it breaks bearish, it'll be the first indication that the 12 hour lower high is being set. So there are a handful of weaker names where, I mean, there's Doge. Doge is looking for a 12 hour lower high. So again, we don't want to get into one track mindset of only bulls. We're definitely seeing a lot of favorable bull setups and a lot of bounces, but there are setups here that bears can be keeping an eye on as well. Adam, a lot of space for a 12 hour lower high. So at first I was scouting four hour lower highs on these time frames, And then as Bitcoin continued to grind higher, just zooming out, okay, bulls getting a bit more bounce follow through, but still tons of space for the 12 hour lower high. So lots of names are going to set 12 hour lower highs in my opinion, sometime within the next probably 12 hours. We'll see. I hope you're well, do good things. Protect those profits. We will see weekly consolidation inevitably. There is no sign of it at this point, but you need to know well in advance. Are you going to hold your position through weekly consolidation or not? And then you establish your trade game plan based around that. Do good things. Check out the free ebook. Click the link. Like, subscribe, all that fun stuff. See you soon. Hey, traders, checking out in the cryptocurrency space. We continue to see the bulls keep full control, bouncing off key EMA support levels. We keep seeing individual bulls running one at a time. We now have stock market bulls catching up as a bit of a laggard move over the last few days and some CPI numbers to give you a heads up about that we need to keep an eye on tomorrow morning.
There are at least 35 turkeys in my yard right now. Put out the food for all the birds and the blue jays and the doves and the cardinals. And I get robbed. This is happening on the other side of the house at the same time.